Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to take macro photos with a Polaroid camera which is surprisingly easy. Uh, but first a little bit of background on how I got into this. Uh, I think most photography nerds at one point or another will become interested in film photography and for me I'm, I've been considering this more than a couple of times but what always stopped me was uh, the thoughts on how much extra work that seems to be involved in film photography compared to digital and that also the extra costs I mean you have to buy film you have to develop film and if you do it yourself it's cheaper but it is extra work as well and I'm kind of lazy and uh, practical and I want things to be quick easy <laughs> and cheap. Uh, so that's why I've stuck to digital uh, for a long time. Uh, but the other week I discovered something that got me very interested in film photography again, uh, which is the new Polaroid camera. Uh, the brand Polaroid was recently purchased by the Impossible Project that have uh, sold old Polaroid cameras and filmed for them for a while. And now they have developed this brand new uh, One Step 2 uh, Polaroid camera, which I thought looks very very cool and interesting. And I got kind of drawn towards trying this. I thought it, like with a Polaroid camera, of course you won't get the quality that you would get with a normal film camera in terms of image quality but you get a hassle-free experience <laughs> you just press the button to take the picture and you have the picture in your hands a couple of minutes later so that attracted me somehow, it got me interested so I was just about to pull the trigger on buying the camera I mean it's not like super expensive it's very reasonably priced if you ask me but then I realized that the film for the one-step camera, the i-type film, is very expensive. $16 for 8 photos. Uh, that's a little bit like over my comfort zone. Uh, because I want to be able to take pictures freely and not worry too much about the costs. And $2 per picture, uh, it's a little bit too much. And also, uh, when I started comparing with other... Uh, instant photo cameras on the market, I realized that uh, the i-type film, it doesn't really give you like super nice results. Uh, if you look at the Instax Mini and the Instax Wide uh, uh, cameras and the film that they use, uh, I get the impression when I compare that these photos are often a bit sharper and uh, with very good uh, color reproduction, most of the time at least. And they definitely are on the same level, if not better, than the Polaroid i-type film. So I started looking more at the Instax cameras. And for me, the Instax mini cameras, and the mini film, which is very popular, it felt a little bit too small. I want the pictures to be a little bit bigger than a credit card. So that got me interested in the Instax wide camera. Uh, basically the photos are uh, more than double the width of the Instax mini. And the camera is quite cheap and the film is very cheap compared to uh, the Polaroid i-type film. Uh, the film for uh, the Instax wide camera, at least in Sweden, it costs around one dollar per photo, which is very reasonable. At that price point, you could easily take one or two photos a day and not have your whole bank account wiped out in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I decided to purchase the Instax wide camera. As you see here, the film comes in like aluminium foil. Uh, to protect it from radiation, which you should be careful with. And then inside it's just a plastic cassette with 10 pictures. I bought the Instax Wide 300 model, which is the current model and I think the only Instax Wide camera, at least sold by Fuji, that you can buy at the moment. I bought it for around 90 US dollars, which I consider very cheap for a camera like this. It comes with a nice little strap and this little close-up lens that I will demonstrate in just a moment. And it's very nice of Fuji to include batteries in such a cheap camera. 
and here we have the camera itself. It is pretty big and it feels quite plasticky, but in a good way I would say. And uh, it's easy to grip, it's lightweight and yeah, I like the look and feel of it. And as you can see it even has like a screw mount for tripods. The viewfinder though is very very small and it's almost like a battle to uh, get your eye in the right place when you're about to take a photo. But you get used to it. And here is where you insert the film. As you can see the construction is pretty simple. The battery cover feels a bit flimsy, but yeah, what you, can you expect in a camera for $90? Inserting a new pack of film is very straightforward, just match up the yellow squares and you're ready to go. The focusing on this camera is a little peculiar, uh, basically the focus is uh, set to a, a fixed point. And uh, by default you can choose from two points, either 0.9 to 3 meters, I guess the focus point is somewhere in between there, or 3 meters to infinity, and I guess the focus then obviously is infinity. And then there is also the little extra close-up lens that you can attach if you want to focus on anything that is uh, down to 0.5 meters in front of you. So basically you have three focus points that you can pick from. And uh, since the aperture is also fixed at I think f14, uh, the depth of field is usually very very deep, so you can uh, get quite good focus in most situations. So this is the close-up lens attached, it has a little mirror on it, and uh, yeah, let's try to make a selfie and see how it comes out. Oh yeah, the first photo you take is always like a plastic sheet that you just need to take out. So let's try again with a real photo. And as you all know, if you've ever used an instant camera, it takes around two minutes, at least in the case of the Instax Wide, before the photo is fully developed. So just have some patience and watch as the photo emerges from whiteness. And I think uh, this photo came out <laughs> pretty good. Uh, maybe it's because I have good lighting here. Anyways, I proceeded to use the camera for a few days uh, for all kinds of photography. I figured it would be a good camera for landscape photography. As the images are wide, uh, they should suit themselves to landscapes. In this shot I made a mistake of not adjusting the focal point to infinity, and you can see the result of that. All in all, the experience of using this camera outside on a photo walk is quite nice, it's very simple, and as long as you don't forget to set the focus to infinity, that you which you have to do every time you open up the camera and turn it on, it is a very nice experience. However, one more factor draws down the experience considerably, and that is that the images just look like shit. The, the contrast is bad, and the colors are bad, and in general shots that should have been pretty nice, they just look terrible. Uh, so for landscape photography or street photography, I would not recommend this camera. I am quite disappointed. Compared to the iPhone shot that I took, uh, yeah, you can see yourself. For indoors photography though, photographing people on a distance of around 1 to 5 meters, this camera is great. With the flash, the images always come out in a good way with decent colors and a nice retro touch to it. I just couldn't accept, however, how bad the landscape shots came out the last time, so I did another photo walk early in the morning. And yeah, compare it to my iPhone shots, and you can see that this time the photos just came out terrible again. Um, yeah, I mean, they don't even look charming, they just look plain bad. So, what other types of 
artistic photography can you do with this camera? Uh, one kind I really like is macro photography, so I decided to try that. What I would want to do to make a good macro camera out of this would be to replace the lens completely. Uh, but that is kind of hard, especially because the shutter is deeply integrated into the lens and uh, I don't think I would be able to pull that off at least. Um, so the best, second best solution would be to attach some lens in front of the original lens. And in many cases you can build a great macro rig if you reverse a normal like 50mm full frame lens uh, in front of uh, a long lens like a uh, zoom lens. But in the case of this camera, the lens is obviously quite wide. I would estimate it to around 35mm in 35mm equivalent. So the result is that we will get very heavy vignetting. And there is not much to do about this. Um, I left the close-up lens on uh, in between the reversed 50mm lens and the original lens. Uh, because the close-up lens uh, is almost like a magnifying glass. So it makes, the, it makes us come a little bit closer. And uh, as you can see, uh, the solution is quite ad hoc here. I just used some tape and I'm trying to attach the lens uh, as firmly as possible without uh, destroying the camera. Then uh, I open up the uh, reverse lens uh, to maximum aperture so that we minimize the vignetting and then uh, to know where to focus is quite hard because we cannot use the viewfinder obviously. What I did was I tried this setup on uh, another camera and uh, my mirrorless camera so that I could see about how far in front of the lens the focus point would be and I estimated it to be around 3 centimeters. So therefore I know that if I take a photo about 3 centimeters in front of the camera uh, it should be on focus, hopefully. <laughs> Another issue with macro photography is of course the light. In this case I used my quite strong uh, LED light that I use for video. I had it on maximum power uh, because I think the flash in the camera itself is not strong enough. Uh, I did some experimenting earlier with a diffuser, a macro photography diffuser, uh, but uh, I think the flash didn't really reach in front of the lens. So here's the first try and uh, it came out like almost good but I kind of missed my target a bit. The small leaf is not really in center. So let's try again. Each try costs a dollar, so I try to be as precise as possible. And look at that! Almost perfect! It's completely sharp, impressively sharp I would say, considering my lens setup. And it's right in the middle. I'm happy with it. And I'm also kind of surprised that I got it right in just a second try. Maybe I was just lucky. Let's try something else. So the lens I'm using, by the way, is my good old Minolta 50mm lens from the 70s. Uh, I made a separate video about this lens and uh, why I love it so much, so check that out if, in case you're interested in the lens. So let's try to photograph a coin. So this is the first try. Uh, I try to have the lens 3cm exactly above the coin. And let's see what we get. Ah, uh, it was a bit too dark. Uh, afterwards I realized that I had uh, blocked the light with the lens itself. So uh, I would need to find another angle so that the light can reach the coin. Also, it was slightly out of focus. So I tried this angle and it came out better. But it wasn't like exactly in the center, so I decided to try one more time. Third try. Let's see what we get. Uh, 
And wow, this is pretty much perfect, I would say. Perfect sharpness, I got the coin in the middle. Third try. And what I realized here is that the magnification ratio is actually pretty good, since uh, uh, you could view the film as the sensor, and if I measure the coin and then the picture of the coin, the picture is exactly two times bigger. So uh, we have built a macro rig here with 2x magnification. Pretty neat. So, what is my conclusion here? Uh, the Instax wide camera, I feel a little bit disappointed. Um, I would have wanted it to be better at like landscape photography. Uh, like a bit of a better dynamic range, I guess. It was a bit fun playing around with the macro setup, but I mean, it wasn't really a real macro setup. I would want the ability to change lenses. And what I think I would want is um, this project on Kickstarter that unfortunately didn't get funded. Uh, it's called the Recivo Instant Film Back. And it's basically an Instax wide back that you could attach to any old medium format camera, like a Mamiya or Hasselblad. And that way you could use these old great cameras with their great lenses uh, on the very good and cheap Instax wide film. And not be uh, limited to the quite crappy lens that is built into the Instax wide camera. I'm really kind of bummed that this project didn't get uh, realized and I really hope that we will get something similar in the future. That would be so much fun. Anyways, I think I will actually try my macro setup uh, when it gets warmer here in Sweden. <laughs> try to photograph some insects with it. That would be fun to try. Otherwise, I guess the Instax wide camera will mostly be used for like indoors photography of people and not so much else. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want more photography tips from me. I try to publish videos every week. And uh, please give a thumbs up if you liked the video, that helps me a lot. Thank you guys, see you soon again.